So uh, the question is, is there evidence for macro or large scale evolution? Well, the evidence that's put forth, I think, is not good evidence. Um, there are two major reasons. If you put most of the reasons that macroevolutionists try and give for their viewpoint, you could talk about the similarity in the genetic code between uh, certain creatures and homology, which is the structure of these living things. So let's just call it DNA and homology. Now, when Richard Dawkins was asked that question, what's the best evidence you have for macroevolution? He basically said uh, the genetic code and other biochemical fundamentals, meaning that we appear to have a common ancestor in our DNA. Now, that certainly is a valid possible interpretation. They could be right about that. Maybe, maybe we are ancestral, re ancestrally related somehow and that dna is evidence of that that's one possible interpretation but what's the other possible interpretation they're not even open to instead of a common ancestor we could have a common designer i mean why do all cars or most cars anyway have four tires because they have a common ancestor no because they have a common designer that works well uh transporting small groups of people four tires right it's a common designer not a common ancestor and the same thing is true with homology. The things, you know, they look alike. Is that a common design or is it a common ancestor? You can't tell just by that evidence. You need other evidence outside of those two things, DNA and homology, to see which way the evidence points. Does it more point more toward a macroevolutionary view or more toward an intelligent design view? And when you look at other evidence, I think it's beyond question that the best evidence shows that we are designed not evolved in a macroevolutionary viewpoint now the macroevolutionary viewpoint is molecules to man without intelligence we all believe in microevolution that we can adapt within our type but the idea that we're all ancestrally related and there there has been no intelligence putting any of this together i think is demonstrably false and in our book stealing from god we go through the reasons why macroevolution is not plausible i'll just give you a few of them real quickly we don't have time to go into the details but the fossil record does not agree with macroevolution epigenetic information does not agree with macroevolution that's the structure of the cell that can't be modified by dna you can mutate dna from now till doomsday you'll never get a new body plan and even darwinists are starting to admit this Irreducible complexity does not allow something to be modified gradually and still have function. All the pieces and all the parts need to be there in working order for you to have the right function at all. So that seems to defeat this gradualism that Darwinism talks about. And uh, there are other reasons as well. So I think the evidence is much stronger we were intelligently designed than we evolved. Amen, amen, well said. Uh... Frank, I completely agree. The evidence suggests that we are created or designed and not um, having evolved through uh, large scale evolutionary processes. And you know, and you know, Donnie, one other thing we should add to this too. This is um, an interesting debate, but even if macroevolutionists were true, that there that's, there's some sort of evolutionary process going on, that wouldn't defeat Christianity. It might cause us to reinterpret uh, passages in the Old Testament, right? But it wouldn't mean that Christianity is false. It wouldn't mean there's no God. It wouldn't right. mean that Jesus didn't rise from the dead, okay? In fact, if macroevolution is true, the laws that drive it are created and sustained by God. Natural laws themselves appear to be designed. Why are they so precise and consistent? Why are they so fine-tuned? Because there's a mind behind them. In fact, you can even think of it this way. How can we even do this live stream right now, Donnie? Think about all of the natural laws and all of the design that went into this for this to even continue. Once we, once people design the programs that we're using now and design the internet and all, Al Gore designed it all, once all that was designed, um, the natural laws that allow it to work have to keep doing what they're doing consistently and precisely I mean, if, if the laws of electromagnetism or the laws of gravity varied every 10 minutes, we couldn't do any of this. We couldn't live, obviously, but we couldn't even have this live stream. Now, why are these laws the way they are? Why are they so precise? Why are they in such a narrow uh, window in which they could be for life to exist? And why do they stay there? 
These appear to be the product of a mind. This is what Aristotle called the unmoved mover. This is what Thomas Aquinas called his fifth way to argue for God, that all things are designed and appear to be going in a direction. The natural laws themselves appear to be designed and they're going in a direction. Amen. Amen. The naturalists are stuck between a rock and a hard place because as you point out, the evidence is not necessarily in favor of universal common ancestry, but hypothetically, if it were, it's still no help to the naturalist. No, because no, because the laws that drive it still need to be explained. And of course, it, evolution doesn't explain where the universe came from, doesn't explain where the first life came from or why the universe is fine tuned, doesn't explain where natural laws came from, doesn't explain uh, objective morality doesn't explain where the laws of mathematics, the laws of logic, the laws of morality or consciousness came from, doesn't explain Old Testament prophecy, doesn't explain the evidence we have that Jesus rose from the dead. None of this is explained by macroevolution. If macroevolution is true, it explains a very small sliver of reality. It doesn't explain what we really need to be explained if we're going to have a worldview that has the proper explanatory power and scope to explain what, we're, what, what we actually observe. Amen. Amen. And I like what you're saying about just the ability to live stream like we are. All of this and how technical and complicated all this is and still one single cell more complicated than the, the laptops we're communicating through Far more. cars we're driving. Oh, yeah. So in fact, I, I don't know if you know, you probably heard bio. I think it's called biomimetics. Yeah. Where we study natural machines in nature and try and mimic them because nature does it better than we do <laughs> <You know? laughs> we have scientists looking at cells and little machinery in cells going how can we design something like this out here because man this thing is so amazing it's so efficient how do we do this and so yet we're studying that. nature to learn how to design stuff ourselves <laughs> and all of that came about by chance for no reason yes. at all apparently according to the uh, naturalist so great response and, and great answer frank as a quick reminder to everyone hit that like button it actually does help team standing for truth is out <laughs>